Um, we're here to present results on the CMAM advisory service in Malawi, uh, which was a seven-year project jointly implemented uh, by the Ministry of Health and Concern with supports from various partners, I think many of whom are probably in this room, um, and with primarily funding from USAID. So I'm here just to, pre uh, just to present one slide, just to frame um, what CAS is or was, uh, how it came to be, and its main objective. Um, yeah. So, uh, and being a headquarters advisor, I, am, uh, I haven't been directly involved in the implementation. I've breezed in and breezed out on a few occasions, but Sylvester has been there from the start, from the inception of the project and even before. So he will take you through the more interesting bits, the um, results and the conclusions. So um, maybe I should just start. Uh, I think probably a lot of you know that um, CTC, uh, as it was once known, uh, started in Malawi in 2002 with a pilot that was jointly implemented by Valid and Concern in Doha District. Um, and basically from that time up till about 2005, uh, C CTC started to expand so that by the end of 2005, CTC was being implemented in about four districts and there had been about 6,000 children who had been treated. But it was sort of progressing in quite an ad hoc way. There weren't even national guidelines per se. Um, and so in 2006, I think it was April, there was a, a workshop that uh, was convened by the Ministry of Health to bring the different actors who'd been working in CTC to kind of compare the evidence to an experience to date and to basically make the case for scaling up CMAM in Malawi. And at that point, at that meeting, I believe, the government of Malawi expressed its intention to scale up CMAM. Um, and CMAM in Malawi means both SAM and MAM treatment. But I suppose the emphasis was a bit more on the SAM treatment because that was what was new about CMAM. And, but what the government recognized was that um, they really would need some technical support. It was a new approach um, and uh, they needed to bring different partners together. So this is how the CTC advisory service uh, came to be. Um, Concern and the Ministry of Health joined um, together and uh, the CTC advisory service was given the mandate um, over a, a projected five-year period, but that was later extended to seven. Um, with these kind of five objectives, um, they, they may have changed a bit from project to project, or from project proposal to project proposal, but essentially to standardize the CMAM service delivery and tools, which at that stage, this was pre the, um, UNICE, or the joint UN statement, bringing about the name CMAM. Um, so we even had different agencies had different names, different approaches. Um, and to develop and roll out CMAM policy and guidelines uh, and build capacity for CMAM service delivery at all levels. Establish and manage a national CMAM reporting and monitoring system and then to advocate for strategic integration of CMAM into the health system at different levels. Um, and then finally, that brings us up to today. So in 2013, in March, um, Concerns Seven Year Project, which was actually a string of two year projects, uh, funding cobbled together here and there, um, ended in March. A final evaluation was conducted by USAID in July and August. And then, and now, uh, the Malawi Ministry of Health has, is planning to and has started to take over the functions of CAS. So I'll hand over to Sylvester now. 11 minutes to go? Um, of course, I think the colors of the map we need to switch. We have more uh, western in the southern region than in the, in the northern part of Malawi. So the red has to be down and, and the green has to be in the northern region. And uh, Malawi is divided into five health zones and has 29 districts. And uh, we, are, we are implementing the CIMAM program in all the districts. And the, the CAS project has been working with the ministry in these particular, uh, particular districts. Uh, in, in 2012 alone, some uh, cases, we, 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 we had a, a new admissions of about 28,000 that we treated in the SAM program, and 36,122 in the uh, uh, moderate acute malnutrition. Uh, during the time that a uh, CAS project was phasing out, 
that was in, in, in March this year, we, we reached a 1% health facility coverage uh, in, in 24 of the 29 districts. As of now, as presented earlier, we have reached 85%, and we hope by the end of this year, we might be at 100% uh, health facility coverage. But the challenge that we have had is the now um, case coverage. We haven't had national level case coverage to assess the, how the, 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 the program is reaching the intended beneficiaries. Yeah, you know the, uh, the implementation, when you look at the performance of the program throughout the time that we have been implementing, we have been uh, actually within the sphere, uh, the sphere standards. Just an example, the QR uh, from 2006, we have been above the recommended 75%. Now, uh, what worked with the CAS project? Uh, we, we, we noted that uh, the CAS project assisted the Minister of Health to rapidly scale up the CIMAM program. As indicated, in 2006, we are in ab about four districts. And in the district, we were also not covering 100% health, uh, health facilities. But now, after instituting the, the, the CAS, which was a technical arm of the ministry, we rapidly uh, scaled up the, uh, the CIMAM program. We developed the uh, CIMAM guidelines, which we have just reviewed, and the, the rolling out of the revised uh, guidelines is, a, is, is in, in progress. But the one that we developed under the CAS project assisted in standardizing implementation of the program. Uh, Kate has mentioned that uh, various players came in before the 2006 consensus forum, and each one of those was implementing according to their own uh, standards. But when we developed the guidelines under cash direction, we standardized everything and uh, everybody was implementing according to, to the protocols. And we also uh, developed the uh, training package which has been used by uh, the, the, the CIMAM national trainers and also for uh, pre-service institutions. As pointed out, we have uh, a team of national trainers and also at a district level, they have their own uh, district trainers. And uh, we also developed the CIMAM operation plan, which guided the minister to implement the, the CIMAM program. And I think this, uh, we can also access it on the CIMAM Forum website. It, uh, it, it has been uploaded. We, we have been also conducting the uh, learning forums. And these uh, reports, you can also uh, get some of the reports of the learning forums on the uh, CIMAM Forum website. And the, uh, we, we have been working to update the pre-service curriculum, and the work is still, uh, still going on to accommodate or to include the, uh, the CIMAM approach. Yeah, so for Malawi to, uh, to come again with the idea of uh, CAS, it has noted that there are some other areas that uh, we needed to work on. Um, the first one is that uh, uh, CAS indeed uh, achieved this objective, and the ministry is proud about it. But we noted that uh, focus was uh, not enough on uh, quality of service. I think it will focus too much on uh, scaling up. We did not focus very much on the, uh, the quality of service. So there are some other challenges that we are facing in terms of uh, service delivery. And the uh, inclusion of uh, CIMAM training in pre-service curriculum. This one um, was one of the objectives that we wanted to achieve with CAS. But uh, you know quite as well that it is uh, uh, sometimes complex to update or to include a new aspect in the, in the curriculum. The regulatory bodies have to accept, and even academic institutions have, have to accept. So we are still, we are still negotiating. What is happening now is that in uh, 
some other pre-service institutions, they have the, the, the classical approach in managing, in managing uh, malnutrition. Now, what happens is that after they, they graduate, we have also to train them again. And what we want is that the, uh, the CIMAM approach has also to go into the pre-service curriculum, and we are working on it. Uh, the support also, the CAST support, largely focused very much on the uh, national support, and we did not focus uh, on the districts that are implementing, and also the five health zones that I have mentioned. As of now, during the phase out uh, strategy, we looked into how best we can involve the district, how best we can involve the, uh, the zones. Uh, still need better monitoring and actual coverage of some. As I indicated, we have not uh, done the, uh, the, the, the coverage survey. And uh, we, we are also slow in terms of uh, integrating the database into HMS. Of course, uh, this has been due to gradual also process of rolling out the revised guidelines. So we are, we are actually working on integrating the, the CIMAM database into HMIS. As of now, it has parallel uh, monitoring system, parallel uh, database. And uh, now, moving out from the CAS project, we, as ministry, we said what we need as of now is to review the uh, CIMAM operation plan to accommodate the challenges that I have mentioned, I have highlighted, because these are the ones that we experienced during the uh, implementation of the CAS. And the, what we are working on is also to decentralize uh, monitoring of the program, mentoring, supervision to the zone and the district level to take on hold this. During the CAS project, CAS was doing the monitoring, almost 80%. So what we want is uh, this to be institutionalized within, uh, within the uh, government systems at the district and at zone level. And uh, as of now, uh, the, the, the database is being managed by uh, Minister of Health. And as I indicated, we are, we are working on in, in integrating in the uh, DHIS tool. And uh, still, though it's a challenge, we have, we have heard about uh, challenges with uh, CIMAM financing. We are still uh, uh, encouraging the district to, to include the core activities within the district implementation plans. Overall, the, 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 the CAS project uh, achieved its objectives. The other challenges that we are facing are the challenges that have got changes with uh, other support systems. But for uh, the, 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 the ministry, uh, we feel that uh, we achieved our objectives. Only that uh, during the review of the operation plan, we'll take on board the gaps that we experienced during the implementation of the project. Thank you so much.